I'm really, really happy to be introducing our next guest. To bring DJ on, we've got a message from a special guest. Hi, everybody. Normally, I'd begin these remarks with a joke about data science, but about half the stuff my staff came up with was below average. But as all of you know, understanding and innovating with data has the potential to change the way we do almost anything for the better. That's why my administration's opened up massive amounts of government data to the public for the first time, with more than 135,000 data sets available for download at data.gov. Think about the weather and map apps we check every day on our phones, many of which are powered by open government data, along with countless other apps and services. Or our new Precision Medicine Initiative, which joins data science and healthcare to accelerate treatments for disease. We want more Americans to dream up and deploy innovations like these, to solve problems, save lives, and create new jobs and opportunities. That's why I'm so pleased to welcome Dr. DJ Patel as the federal government's first chief data scientist. And that's why I'm asking you to help. As DJ likes to say, data science is a team sport. That's why we want you, America's data scientists, to join us in this effort. Help us build better digital services for the American people. Help us unleash new innovation in areas like healthcare and climate change. Help us change this country and this world for the better. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's great to be here, especially on uh, such short notice, uh, especially thanks to the, the, all the organizers of Strata in, in helping us get here. And, and the thing I just want to take a little bit of time today to talk about is really the phenomenal opportunity that's, that's ahead of us, uh, especially as data science. I mean, it's, if we just take a, a second and, and think about how much has changed, uh, it's, this is the fifth Strata Conference. And when we were at the very first one, I don't think any of us could have imagined how much has happened. And if we just take a quick recount of all the kind of things that have happened over the last four years. I mean, the first one is there is, you know, some guy claimed that data science, scientist is the sexiest job of the 21st century. Uh, but the thing that's really about that now is how much that demand for data science is growing. I and mean, the big thing there is we've seen all these companies and nonprofits really that are created upon the value proposition of data. They're making real products, adding real value by building things on top of really great data sets and creating great data sets and, and empowering people to do things with that. We've seen this whole area of new training programs. When the first Strata conference started, there was like half a day of training. Now there's training throughout the whole thing. And we're seeing training not just happen across the industry, but now moving into the traditional educational tiers at the universities, even in high school areas, where people are starting to be more focused on how they can actually use data and apply data to everyday life. We've seen the new technology being created. We've just seen so much of it, everything from Hadoop, Spark, Kafka, uh, all these great things. I mean, the, 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 the list goes on and on of all this incredible innovation that's really designed to power the next generation of technology. And one of the most awesome things for me personally is how much our government has embraced data science. And if we think, like, where is that really coming from? One of the cool things I think we've seen is this evolution of how data science has gone, is gone in terms of the functional role. Not necessarily the way you organize teams, but the responsibility. You know, we've had the CTO and the CIO who have typically had overlap. And now we have this, this chief data officer, the chief data scientist, the person who's responsible for helping drive the organization forward in being a data-driven place, a data-driven environment. These are the guys, and all of you, many of you, who are there, who are making the value proposition of data happen. And so if we take that and we look at the government, one of the things that I, I, I can't stress enough and that has been overwhelming to me personally to see is that this is literally the most data-driven president we have ever had. And 
You saw in the video, but it's, what's, what's the proof? What's, what's really the thing in there? And this is the president that's created the first set of dashboards at the federal level to monitor the progress on the IT spend. And there's dashboards the president regularly looks at for this stuff. And that's, think about how phenomenal it is, the idea of actually having a dashboard and regularly keeping on top of things to make decisions. He's established data.gov, which hosts 100, over 135 data sets, and it's growing phenomenally fast. For any of those that are out there who are working trying to become data scientists and want to find a place where you can play with data, I mean, this is the place to go. My own personal career started because it was built on top of this open data from the National Weather Service. And what I had to do as a grad student was just kind of secretly go in every night to the math department at University of Maryland and secretly take over all the computers and ETL and parse and rip through all the data. That's how I got my degree. Without that data, I couldn't have gotten my start. And I think that's what's really great about it is how much of that can lead to open transparency of government, as well as to the great things that can be built on top of it. We've got a, an executive order that ensures that all data that's being going to be created for, in the future from the government is open and machine readable. And, and that sounds kinda, kind of like a trivial thing, but that's a massive big change that all the data is machine readable and that's a format it's created. It's not just in a bunch of pieces of paper. It's machine readable and it's accessible. There's a tremendous amount of research that's being invested in data science and bringing data science and bioinformatics together to improve healthcare. And like, just like you heard the president say. And that's really a phenomenal place where I think all of us can jump in and contribute. And then there's the big data report, and for those of you that, are, that haven't checked out the big data report or the update to the big data report, I highly encourage you to check it out. It's got some incredible uh, nuggets in there. It's got really great assessment. And what it shows is how forward thinking so many people in the government have been about this issue. And it really is also a big component about that is how do we really start thinking about the responsibility of data the ethics around data, and how do we ensure that we're ensuring privacy for our customers or for consumers uh, the, and all the other, like for example, the other one which is there is around students and how do we make sure that students' privacy is protected with data and a lot of the other eff efforts around that are outlined in the big data report. So, for, oh, finally, could we go back one real quick? So finally, the last one here is also establishing a data-driven culture. The number of chief data officers, chief data scientists, analytics people that is across everything from the National Institutes for Health, Department of Energy, Commerce, Treasury, Department of Transportation, I could go on and on and on. There are key leaders in all these places or people who have, uh, these departments have open searches for data professionals. And that is, that's something that we've just never seen. In fact, they've probably got, right now, they're more data-driven than most companies are right now. And that's a, a, a bold statement, but from everything in the small period of time that I've been there, it's absolutely true. And so, what does a chief data scientist for the United States do? So we've got a new title. What, is, what are we going to focus on? The first part, our mission. Our mission is to responsibly unleash the power of data for the benefit of the American public and to maximize the nation's return on its investment in data. That's what we're here to do. That's what the focus of the, the, the position and the office will be. How does that translate into the responsibilities? First, providing vision on how we can maximize the social return on the data that's produced as a country. How do we take that data and how do we return it back to people? How do we open it up in a useful way? How do we build an ecosystem of things that are really data, that data products that add value? How do we create nationwide data policies that are there for shared services, for leaning practices, and really making sure that we're retaining our competitive edge with all the fantastic and phenomenal innovation all of you have helped drive? Working across the federal government with the agencies to establish best practices and ensure long-term sustainability, making sure that data science really continues to add value. And finally, recruiting. 
we got to get the best and the brightest minds in the government, especially for public service. And we have so much that can be done when we combine the federal layer with the governments, with what's being done in academia and industry. Let's put it all together. And so what are the priorities? The first priority, precision medicine. This really great opportunity where we've got all these people who've done all this incredible work in healthcare, uh, as Roger said, with the, the electronic medical records, the electronic health records, and all the bioinformatics that have been done. Let's start bringing the data science and bioinformatics together. Phil Bourne, who's leading one of the big data efforts at NIH, him and I have started collaborating. So how can we bring the two communities together to get the biggest bang for the buck? Number two, start building those data products. Let's get to it and build on top of data.gov. Let's start building those products that really showcase the value proposition and not just about opening the data. Let's make a vibrant ecosystem and value-added products. And then finally, the responsible data science, which I talked about, to making sure that we're ensuring great data policy going forward for everyone. What does success look like for us? Data-driven organization? A data-driven organization, I've used this definition in the past of it acquires processes, leverage data in a timely fashion to create efficiencies, build new products, navigate the competitive landscape. Here's what we think it is for government. A data-driven government responsibly gathers, processes, leverages, and releases data in a timely fashion to enable transparency, to create efficiencies, provide security, and foster innovation. That's what we're trying to create. And so I have one ask for all of you. There's one thing I can ask all of you here today, all of those that are out there on the webcast, any data scientist, one thing. Data science is a team sport, and we can't do this without you. We really need your help. We're starting to build out teams in each of the agencies. We have data analytics professionals in, every, in uh, all sorts of capacities. Uh, we need the help. You don't have to be a unit citizen. With teams building, you don't have to relocate to DC. There's all sorts of ways to jump in. And so my ask to you is go out, check out whitehouse.gov slash USDS, US Digital Service. Check it out. There's a video out there that talks about some of the amazing work that they've done, everything from helping veterans to great, getting, building great transparency. Help us. We need your help. We can't do it alone. And I'll be around all day to, if people have questions, but I hope you'll consider joining forces with us and helping make this country even better. Thank you.